A warm welcome back to Italia Demo for episode 9 with me, Mr. CLEP. It's a new day and I'm over here at field 11, 12, 13. Our barley has grown. Uh, our soybean is ready to harvest over on field 1. I finished off doing all the hay bales off of our cow pasture up on the hill and the grass field that belongs to Carl. All those hay bales are all stacked up over the farm. Um, I did buy, did I do it in the last episode? I did buy an Ajranchi trailer, which at the moment is in bale configuration, but I can then convert it and make it into a trailer and you know, however I want to go about it. That's entirely up to me. Now, this field, interestingly, and I know Bear and Papa's going to be very interested by this. If you recall, when we planted this field, I planted it and then I preemptively sprayed it straight after seeding, planting. I preemptively sprayed it with herbicide to stop the weeds growing. But I didn't get, there was nothing, no colour change on the field. It wasn't like, you know, when you do fertiliser and it looks like it sort of, it goes darker, it looks like it's gone sort of damp or, you know, however you want to look at it. Nothing happened. So I, I couldn't tell whether or not, had, had it worked, had it not worked, you know. Well... In the process of doing the fields, field one had to be weeded. And again, I can't remember if I showed that. Did I put a clip in showing me doing that in the last episode? Field one needed weeding. Field 11, 12, 13. Ah, oh, look, I must have missed a bit there. There's a tiny patch at the top, but the rest haven't touched it. So the preemptive spraying worked. I just didn't... There was no way of telling it had worked at the time. So, yeah, very peculiar, but... Oh, um, fold up. Good idea with it. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, all good. I've got straw swath enabled um, because I've got some bale contracts still and I'm going to need straw for bedding and I'm going to need straw for tarmix ration. So every time I get the opportunity to do, do, to do bales, I'm doing them because, you know, even if I get to a point, I think, OK, well, I've, I've fulfilled all of my bale contracts. Um, I can still work and just sell them. And if I get to a point, I think, okay, well, I don't need to anymore. I've got enough in like, storage, enough for mixed ration, enough for bedding, then I can stop making them. But for the time being, every opportunity I get to make grass or straw or silage or hay, I'm going to make them. Uh, it just kind of makes sense. I know it's weird if I'm going right up the middle, but it just kind of right from the gate, it just made a bit, a bit more sense to go from there. I don't know what the capacity or the yield's going to be like. I need it to be between 40 and 45,000 to fulfill a contract for the Hopping Mad Brewery. If I get to that point, I'll talk about that contract. I suppose I could feel, fulfill part of it. Field one needs to be harvest of soybean, and that'll be the second part for um, Wharfside Organics, if you recall. I did the first harvest on there, all organic, nothing on there, nothing nefarious, no herbicide, nothing at all. Mechanical weeding. They had their first load, their contract was for two harvests of organic soybean so hopefully I can get that done but what we're also I'm hoping to get done today we have got a contract for cows which I'm hoping to go and collect some cows oh and also I'm going to pay the ransom I say ransom yeah I'm going to pay the ransom um, for uh, Jeremy because I left Jeremy at Spectacle and um, to get him back, I've got to supply some bales um, to Mark. Only four of each, four of each, four... Yeah, not including grass, I think. Yeah, straw, hay, silage, four of each, and we can get Jeremy back. So potentially I'm going to pay the ransom, we'll get that sorted. So I want to get this going first, and then I can set a worker off, although this harvest is going to be full pretty quickly, which leads me to think we are going to more than get enough barley that we need for Hopping Mad Brewery which for me makes me very happy, which will make more sense when we talk a bit more about the contract. So what I'm going to do is whisper on the outside. Like I say, I'm going to get to a point where the, the worker can carry on. I'll bring the lorry over with the trailer on the back, because that's a 45,000 litre trailer, which actually would be a full load for what they need, so that would be absolutely perfect. And um, I'm going to load up the 12 bales required to pay the ransom for Jeremy. <laughs> we'll get those sent off. And then hopefully while all that's going on, oh, I need to exercise the horses today. They're looking really good, actually. Let's just stop there a second. We'll check on the horse situation. Chickens are still producing. They do need some more feed. So if I've got any left over from the contract on here, I'll stick it in storage and we've got them some more feed. Um, 
yeah, they're zero percent for daily riding, but price has gone up. They're worth twenty thousand each, so the contract ongoing for uh, Big Popper C is just going brilliant. Um, I do, I do have another horse contract, um, which is no, it's not over. It's one of the ones that's in my multi and complicated section. And when I say com, I know I've mentioned this before. When I put them in that category, multi, it's because it's a, it's multi-step. There's a few things they want in a contract, or if I put complicated, not necessarily that it's, that it's an overly complicated contract, but there's a, there's a few elements to it which I have to try and get my head around and work out the logistics of. Um, I have been offered an absolute load of uh, like transport logistic um, offers. Which, um, I, yeah, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the fact that, um, that people want to get involved. Um, obviously, there's various different companies I've used in the past to say companies. <laughs> KJ Wiggums is my go-to. People know that. Uh, well, I say people know that. I think possibly people know that. Um, we've also got... Um, Willie's logging and logistics that we did a bit with on Holmerkra. Um, William is a very good friend to the to the to the channel, and has offered some transport contracts. I've been offered some contracts. From, yeah, so I've, I've got a load. I've got an absolute load. I've got one from Michael regarding his um, hydro haulage transport company, which we might look into because there's a, a sort of deeper. Uh, what's the way way of putting it? There's a there's a backstory to it, which I want to do do right by. I, and again, I'm being really cryptic, and I apologise, but um, I don't really want to get into it until I'm sort of ready to, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go and get the lorry. I'll get those bits done. I'll get the bales loaded up. I may do a little um, little clip of me loading the bales onto the trailer. Um, let's get cracking on today's jobs. You know, whether I get them all done in today's episode, I will try my best to. I want to get the cows over. The money we're making from the greenhouse contract, um, the greenhouse project, vent to grow, and the um, olive trees, the money has gone up a bit from the end of the last episode. As you can see, our soybean has grown fantastically. So I think what we'll do, if we are going to get cows while we're here... Let's get onto the catalogue and order to be delivered a mixer. Now I thought about going for, I haven't used before, a Robert. Doesn't really matter which one, does it? I don't think. Both 17,000 litres, both require 90 horsepower. I think it's just the offload, isn't it? Tungsten cutters? tube ring do we want with or without we'll go with uh front left door front right door double front doors left back door she come on the back if we go for doubles it's an extra two grand regardless where they are and then we'll set up do i need to change that really doesn't really matter. 42,300 and we've got ourselves a feed mixer ready for when the cows come. So, let's buy that. That's a bit scary actually. Right. Let's go. I do love this lorry. It's brilliant. How are we going with egg boxes? Our egg contract is for 20 egg boxes, so we're getting there, we're gradually building up. I do need to give some more feed to the chickens, so I hope I have a little bit left over. We haven't actually been for the contract. Um, Big Daddy messaged me about the New Holland sign, and it wasn't just for New Holland gear. It was for a kind of anything I went got from the store, I could get a discount. But New Holland are kind of funding it. Anyway, I'll get all that aside. We have got on field 18 and 19 there's corn growing uh, that's owned by somebody else and there's a contract upcoming on there which I'm kind of looking forward to but that's had to be kind of prepped as you see the outside of the fields 
grown, but the inside's not yet. That's peculiar. They're 18 and 19 just there. Barley field is almost complete. I have a full 45,000 litres in the lorry trailer. The harvester is full, but nowhere to put it. I have been baling it as I've been going as well, so I'll have a load more straw, straw bales while we're on the subject of bales. Rather than taking them to the train station this time, we bring them to the biogas plant because the train line runs past here anyway. Um, just a reminder of this contract, and this was the one, this is the ransom. Um, dearest Miss Silly P, recently I've acquired your old farm Spectacle Island, but there is one thing bothering me. There is a sheep you have left here which goes by the name of Jeremy. Now normally I wouldn't ha I don't have nightmares, but recently I've been hearing sheep voices. Yes, that's right, voices. Now I don't speak Italian uh, that well, but I, all I hear is portami a casa, which translated means take me home. Now I'm not asking for payment of Jeremy, all I require is TMR supplies for the 10 cows you left roaming freely in field 1. All I require is 4 straw bales, done, uh, 4 hay bales, done, and 4 silage bales. When all that is supplied I, supplied, I will happily get him transported to Italy back to where he belongs. Thank you, Farmer Mark Webster. So, Mark, the bales will be on their way to you. I hope you will now release Jeremy unharmed. Um, and yeah, so that's that bit done. What I will do, I think, is I'll leave... Oh no. Um, yeah, what we'll do. Let's 
and do that, let's do that, let's do that. Uh, oh yeah, this one doesn't lower, does it? Oh, okay. Done, because I need to go and collect the bales now uh, off of the field. So what I'm going to do is drive over to the field. We'll get the 45,000 litres we got there, which will support the next contract. It's awesome, I'm so happy. <laughs> Um, I will read that one out when we get to it. We'll take that off. I think that's got to go to the IFO. I suppose I could do it by train. It would save me a bit of time, I guess. I'm trying to work out the best way of doing it, really. Uh, maybe. Um, so hopefully by the time we got all this sorted out, the barley delivered. Just trying to think as well, because I've recorded this in a couple of phases whether or not I have already read that out. I hope I haven't. Now, whoa, curb. Didn't see that. So, the contract we're now going to fulfil is for the Hoppy Mad Brewery, which I kind of mentioned. Now, again, did I... Did I read it out? <laughs> I'm going mad! I don't think I did. Um, hi, Miss Silly P. I am contacting you on behalf of the Hopping Mad Brewery. We are a local brewery who pride ourselves in local ingredients and small batch craft brews. Our current supplier of barley has, an, has had an unfortunate problem with this crop, and I was advised by the local publican that you take pride in your produce and strive for the best out of your crops. Uh, we would like to request you help in supplying us with some barley at your soonest at your soonest availability oh my oh, of the road um we are creating a new porter i do like a stout and a porter imperial stout oh oh pretty nice i mean i just like real ale generally but i've, I've i'll get on to that in just a moment it's just a weird thing um if you're able to help um we would like to call it mr silly p porter so porter mr silly porter love it uh, we will be needing 40 to 45,000 litres and we're willing to pay 10% more than the asking price. We have 7,600 litres of corn from a previous creation we would like to give to you. We would also like to supply you with two cases of porter once it's created. Nice. Um, it does say about local transport, but they come and collect, but we're actually we're okay with that. Um, so, the lorry's just down there, as you can see, the field is baled. The first bale out the back of the baler was a hay one, because I still had some hay left from when I did all the hay baling. So I've got one hay bale, the rest of straw. I, I didn't make a note of how many I had, actually, which is a bit annoying. Uh, what we'll do is we'll pull across the grass here, I'll collect the bales off there, and we'll take them back to the main farm in a little while. Because they will no doubt come in handy. What I need to do is unload the lorry, because the harvest is full, I need to unload that and finish off the last little bit. The last little bit of barley will be going back to the farm and we'll be using that for the chickens because we are running low. I'm going to check the barley price just to make sure. Uh, 687 at the IFO and climbing. I don't know whether we'll have enough oomph to get over the hill with this. Maybe if I went this way with a gradual sweep up. Just thinking of sort of driving all the way around. Let's go across the field. Get to the iPhone, we'll get this delivered. So yeah, regards the Hopping Mad Brewery marketing team. I believe that's Travis. He's part of the marketing team. So Travis, your 45,000 litres of barley is on its way. I mean, I think this will just keep going, even if it really slows down. If we go up and over the top and then down the other side, we should be absolutely fine. Oh, I don't know though. <laughs> it hasn't got a lot of horsepower, this lorry. It's a, sm it's a small lorry. And for 45,000 litres, I suppose, it, on steep hills, it will struggle a little bit. As long as it keeps moving, we don't get to that point where it gets to zero and it just wheel spins a little bit and it all gets rather ugly. So yeah, what I'm saying about the porters, the weird thing, as a younger man, I don't mind in the summer a light pale ale, an inch of pale ale, I don't mind various different hoppy types of beers. Um, 
and the, the paler you go and the lighter you go, you're bordering into lager territory. Um, I'm not a big fan of mass-produced lager, I'll be totally honest with you. Um, but a light pale ale, not too bad in the summer, quite refreshing, citrusy, that kind of thing. Now, um, I preferred most of my youth uh, a kind of ruby, rubies and amber beers I really, really liked. And the whole selection of ruby and amber beers. My brother has always been a bigger fan of the darker, more malty sort of beers, things like stouts and porters and milk stouts and, you know. And I, you know, over the years I've tried a few different ones. I always found them just a little bit too much, a little bit too heavy. Don't mind a pint of Guinness every now and again, that kind of thing. Um, but I've found as I've got older, my palate has changed. I don't drink as many ruby beers. In the summer, I might still have a pale ale, and I, I do like a lot of the brew dog beers. There's brew dog do a lot of great stuff. Um, I've loads of breweries do. I've got loads of favourite breweries. And I've probably mentioned it before, but the Jennings Brewery up in the Lake District, up in Cockerman, um, did a beer called Snecklifter, which was a dark kind of, not a stout, but it was a dark beer. Um, and they've stopped producing it because they were bought out by Marston's, and Marston's basically said to them, OK, we don't need to do that one anymore. And I've been trying a lot more milk stouts and stouts and porters and imperial stouts and some of the flavours because you get a lot of like coffee stouts and you get um, caramel ones and I mean so many different flavours, coconut and macaroon. I mean, I've got, I bought a whole load recently of all different really interesting flavours. Um, some, with, some with like a marshmallow. I'm not a great fan of Saison's, the ones, the sort of sour beers, I'm, I'm not a great fan of Saison's. Um, but I've kind of moved, my whole taste has moved from ambers and rubies up to the, to the darker side, the darker end of the spectrum. I don't mind when you get into some of those, I'll be honest, some of the more craft type ones, some of the imperial stouts, you're looking at 10, 11, 12, 13% um, last year or might have been the year before. Uh, we bought, my brother and I um, bought to try. Um, a Christmas cake imperial stout that was 14% I think it was and it was a big bottle and we split it between us blimey strong is not the word um, but it tasted like Christmas cake it was incredible I think that was Cloudwater I'm sure it was Cloudwater Brewery it was so nice so nice anyway enough talk of beers and things I need to get down there and sell this. I'll see you there in a moment. I hope this is correct. I'm assuming that when you sell normally, because it only gives one price for IFO. I know for the contract, sometimes it stipulates train or other, um, but well, hopefully we're gonna be right. From here, I'm gonna head straight on and we're gonna go back round towards the train station and to the livestock market because we're going to be picking up the first of our cows. Got to be careful of the roof here. So Travis and the guys at the Hopping Mad Brewery, here comes your barley. So careful of that roof. Okay, fantastic. Another one off the list. So, while we're heading off, um, we are going to be now looking at cows. I said I've got cows to collect. I, that's why I bought the mixer wagon. I've got all the stuff to make mix. I'm going to have to take it up because from where my farm is, all the way up to the, to the um, well, the cow pasture is right up on the top of that hill. It's a bit of a trek, so sure the best way you're going about that. I suppose I could take all the bales up there and the mixer up there and I could always do mixes up there but it means having a loading wagon or something up there all the time. It's a tricky one isn't it? We'll just have to transport it I guess. No problem. Right, road's clear. So contracts. I'm a YouTuber and my business is called Matt's Corvette. Matt's Corvette Garage. Uh, Matt has been a follower of the channel for a very long time and does have his own YouTube channel and he has a Corvette that he's um, doing up. Um, but I also own a farm. It's called Lone Oak Farms. We own pigs and cows and of course chickens. Our farm has grown to have many milking cows 
but with the milkers we have introduced a full to our group last year therefore to gain some new calves because many of our milkers are older we must thin out the older ones for the new calves coming in the winter months uh, my contract is could I transport 25 cows to you um, ask if you could pick them up at the animal dealer which is what we're going to do I've made arrangements with them to house them until you can pick them up if you could keep them until their time comes you keep the milk and sell it uh, I could provide a few truckloads of TMR we should be fine for that um, if you could provide the water when the time comes you can also keep the milk keep the meat um, uh, to support your family you can also cover the cost of maintenance and storage costs associated with housing them Please let me know if you accept the contract so I can get the cows transported to your city. Thank you, Matt. That shouldn't be a proper tool, Matt. We're on it. I know it came along here very slowly. We're going to go this way. Um, I'll come back for the trailer later. So there should be a trailer load of 10. I think the trailer that, that we've got there will do 10. So we're going to do two loads of 10 and one of 5. I d I'm now I'm worried that 25 cows, what I've got in bales, I don't know if it will do enough TMR. We have got the water uh, container, that is over here with the greenhouses um, and the olive trees, so I can take that up the hill, because I think we need to go that way, don't we? Yeah, it's all, it's all worked out rather well, actually. Oh no, because I can't come back around. It's the old one-way street problem again isn't it how frustrating and then hopefully by the time we got all this done maybe Jeremy will be here and go and collect it fingers crossed it all seems to be falling into place that's two contracts completed today third one will be on its way to completed I like a day like this where you get a load done you know where it all just works out. Right, just come out there. Okay. There's our first ten. Um, yeah, I'll cut this bit. I'll cut the journey out because it's a bit of a drive round. I'll see you back in a minute. I'm not too sure how well this is going to go up the hill, but we will try. And um, it might, oh, I was just thinking, has this got a hairpin on it? Find the signs. This is quite a long trailer. Oh. Um. <laughs> Oh dear, stay nice and wide. Oh, we might be all right. We didn't meet anything coming the other way. That's cool. It's been a weird old week this week. With one thing and another. I've, I've been really struggling to keep up with everything. We had, as I mentioned in the mod review, we had contractors, uh, builders in. We had really horrendous rain the other day um, it was poor, I mean, absolutely pouring down torrential rain and I came out to the kitchen to have myself a cup of coffee and there was water coming in <laughs> um, down the inside of the wall um, we had a problem a few years back where the roof was leaking up on top of the kitchen so we got a normal roof down onto a flat roof and the flat roof had been leaking so we had a company out to redo the flat roof which was great we had someone come out and do the guttering but there was, there's been a problem with it. Um, and what's been happening is the water has been coming off of the roof, not going into the gutter, but running down the wall. And when it's been running down the wall, it's gone back underneath and it's come down inside the wall. So when it was really torrential rain, um, it's like the wall becomes saturated and it just poured out. And we had no idea of that until the water started pouring out into the, you know. So these guys came out to do the guttering and the fascia and stuff. Um, yesterday and we had a bit of rain last night oh trying to open it mm. 
Oh, I was say, if I can't unload this, I'm in real trouble. Um, but... Uh, I've got a really worried, sneaking suspicion we've been stitched up. I went up to have a look. I, I'm terrified of heights. I know, it's, I've always, since a kid, I'm, I just can't deal with heights. So I went up to look out the bedroom window, onto it, and it doesn't look like the guttering they've put up is close enough to the roof. We had a bit of rain last night, and we still had water running down the wall. So when I went up to have a look, there's a gap. So it, the rainwater's not coming off the roof and going into the gutter. Now, I don't know if it's just not clicked into the brackets properly or what. So, yeah, it's been a real... I've been trying to sort of sort juggle a whole load of stuff, and it's not been working. So as far as Let's Plays go, I realise it's been, you know, quite thin on the ground this week, and I apologise for that with mod reviews and map tours and various different bits and bobs. I've been trying to... I had one day where it was just prep because I did all that stuff on Attingham Park with the bales and the carrot harvest and then I had to do a load of baling work and stuff and a few bits setting up on here. Um, I suddenly realised a whole day had gone by. I had technically been working because I was still prepping everything for a video but just hadn't got to a point where I could record and put out a video which was a bit frustrating if I'm honest. I've got to be so careful I don't know the side. Right, I'm going to get the next two loads up. Um, what we're on, 159,035. Uh, so, yeah, I'll see you in a bit when that's all done. We'll get these two loads up. And then I'll go and get the mixer wagon, we'll make some feed up, and we'll get the cows fed, and then we'll get some water up there as well. Because they're in a pasture, I don't think that takes bedding, so we're not going to need straw for the cows. At least I don't think we do. You know what I need to do is let's just double check that before I assume anything. Uh, just water, yeah, nothing. I don't need bedding. They will need some ration. Um, they will still produce milk, although I won't get slurry or manure from them, obviously, because I'm not providing them with straw. And it is an open pasture, so we'll get the milk, we won't get any slurry. Yeah, that's probably not too much of a problem because it means there's nothing for me to clean up. Okay, we're rocking and rolling. I bought 36 straw bales back from the field. There are about another four or five. And then the hay bales still over there. Although, the problem I'm having, if I auto unload, because unlike a lot of auto unload trailers, you can bring them out and drop them down. This one comes out, but won't go down. I've been out of work. I think that's always been like that. So when I unloaded the straw bales, that happened. I tried to unload them behind, and, um, yeah, that's going to need some sorting out. Uh, the mixer wagon is a little bit further up. I've bought that over from the store. You can just see the Robert, the lovely blue of the Robert there. I'm going to grab that one. As far as I can tell, I mean, it takes all sorts of crops, the Robert, so you can put sugar beet in it and um, potatoes. I think it does wheat and barley. Um, I'm going to try one bale of each. I'm hoping that's going to be the right mix. If it's not, we're going to be in trouble. Oh no! Just realised what I've done. 
Oh no, it's a seven, seventeen thousand 17,000 litre, isn't it? One bale of each will take us to 15. So we should be okay. Uh, providing it will do a mix of thirds. If it doesn't do a mix of thirds, then we could be in trouble. Oh, I do also have some grass bales there. I need to do something with as well. I was just suddenly panicked and thought I wasn't going to be high enough. Right, let's do that, and that. Oh, that could be a problem. Let's put it in these pallets. Maybe I should have done the other stuff first. Oh no. Didn't think of that either. I'm having an absolute mare. I wish you can see the soybean harvest. I thought, well, the harvest is done on the other field doing the barley. I might as well get it over here and get it cracking on. Uh, with the soybean harvest. Mm, one more. I'm going to use the square bales first. Those were left over from a baling contract I did. An in-game one, not a subscriber contract. So, yeah. Oh, it's bumpy along here. And hopefully, oh, I really do hope when I check inside that it's um, it's correct. Otherwise, I might just sob a little bit. No, no, that's what I wanted. Fingers crossed. Come on, please go lighter. I think we might be all right. It, did, it definitely went lighter, didn't it? Let's hop in. Let's check. We're in the green. 14,000 litres? Oh. Mm. Idiot. Right. The baler, the Galignani we've got, does 5,000 litre bales. Although, I'm sure some of these early ones were... Those sixes, that John Deere baler we had, did that do... I might have a mix of fours and fives, but those there, because they were part of a contract, the baler was a 4,000. So I've got 14,000 litres, not not 15. I'm just worried if I put something else in, is it going to really mess the mix up? Um, what's lowest on there that I could get away with? Another silage bale? Although that's going to put over. You know what, I'm going to take this load first and I'll worry about it on the next load. Okay, let's get this load up to the cows um, and then let's say I'll sort of take, I mean, I suppose as long as everything is going to be in the green if I'm not doing full loads at 17,000, which if there were 4,000 litre bales, it would be only 12 anyway I could put possibly a second hay in or maybe a second silage to pad it right out um Soybean harvest will carry on here for a bit, and I'll keep unloading that, and then we'll, or I'll go over to field 10, 11, no, 11, 12, 13, and collect those last of the bales. Now, I need to double check as well, how are we looking on the ground with regard to, right, so that's going to need some lime in doing. 11 needs lime, and around the edges where I extended the field's going to need a bit, but it does need ploughing, that's good. Um, I think what I'm going to do is probably, if I cultivate it again using our Cambridge roller, I can get the fertilising state, treat them as organic, or do I preemptively spray again? Or do I just use the weeder if I get weeds? Because that way, whatever crop I take off of them, whatever crop I decide to put into them, I can treat as organic anyway. That way, if I've got, because I think I'm sure I've got some other organic contracts, I can still... Did I say I was going to put another... 
No, because that would be potentially a 5,000 litre bale to use for 3,000 litres. That doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, let's find a route up. Let's get this delivered. And then we'll um, get the water done. Oh, looks like the harvest is full. Brilliant. I do like this mixer. As I haven't used one like this before. But again, I don't know if you noticed. You probably did. Um, if you look down that list of stuff there in the mixing ratio, we've got soybean, wheat, barley, potatoes and sugar beets. So you can, depending on what other things you've got laying around, you can make up a total mix ration mix with all various different things. If you want to be a bit more kind of realistic and say we're going to add in a bit of kind of um, like, like sugar beet and a lot of farmers put sugar beet and potato and stuff like that in the mix for cows too. You can go down that route if you want to. Okay. I'm pleased with that. I suppose maybe we should have emptied the harvester because that's now sitting on a worker and that's going to be, yeah, that I'm being charged on. I why that's sitting there. Okay. I'll see you up there to get the TMR put in. And I'm going to have to do a few loads backwards and forwards. Again, I think because the topography, the way the farm's spread out, because I've got the cow pasture up on top of the hill, um, a lot of farms are like this. You are doing a lot of driving between to drop things off and pick things up and feed animals. And it's, not all farms have everything in one place. I've been very lucky of late, the farms I have been working on, um, to have everything quite close at hand. And I've set it up in a way that all the feed and all the storage and all the silos and everything are right up on top of each other, which makes this sort of thing unnecessary. You know, you, you don't have to drive miles with feed for your cows. But then I suppose a lot of farms, you probably would have your cows close. I don't know. It's summer pastures. I guess you wouldn't. Your cows would be out. Roaming wild. Free-range cows. You see the extra bales there? I've got a few. It's not a bounce to this mixer as well. I can get water from here. So if I bring my water tanker up and I run out, I can come down to that little fountain there. Fountain and pool. I'm sure I did when I did the map tour. It looks very Roman, like, you know, built into the hillside to take advantage of a natural spring. That situation there with the cow being up in the air is really baffling me. Like there's an obstacle there of some description but I can't work out <laughs> why it would be doing that levitating cows here there's one further over as well I just don't know no 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 it's very difficult when you've got a lot of cows now we'll let me do water either side that's going to be the other side only Water? What am I talking about? I'm doing feed water. There we go. Tell mix ration. Are we on tip side right? Because otherwise it's going to be really weird. Nope. Tip side right we want. Let's turn that off. Back up to there. This is barely going to touch the sides, but it's going to get us going at least. And I have to do a whole load of runs. Backwards and forwards, I think. That's all right. So how are we looking with regard to TMR? Okay, maybe five or six runs. If I do a 17,000 litre, I won't need as many. So I'll be water next, and that'll be the cows sorted. Horses, must ride the horses. I need that on a post-it, really. Okay. <laughs> We've got special helium cows, that's what it is. I think it's just because the pen I used is on a, on a very hilly area and it should have been a lot flatter, I think. 
On my way down the hill, I thought rather than go and get the next load of tow mix ration sorted, I'll go and grab the water tanker. It's only just along there. Look at the olive trees, olive orchard, and we're just down the hill. I'm going to top it up. At the water point just here. Now, I'm not sure where exactly the trigger is. That's the only problem. Do I need to drive across in front, or is it just here at the side? I hope it's only kind of just obvious. Maybe it's right there, is it? top it up. Now that looks a lot steeper than that does, so I think when we're full we might have a problem pulling up that one, but we can uh, swing around the other way. Perfect. There we can't. Got stuff in the post. Excellent. I suppose what I could do with this is a faster tractor. <laughs> that way, driving around between areas on the on the, the map doesn't matter then. Also, to be fair, like I said, for, for videos, for watching, it's probably frustrating. I don't mind it, but I'm really enjoying driving around the map. So, Matt, your 25 cows are here. We have them. I will feed them. I will water them. Um, and we'll deal with anything we need to further down the line. I'm hoping in this lovely environment with the sweeping hillsides and the sun on them all day, um, they're going to lead a long and happy life, hopefully. I might need to put more in this as well. Let's have a look how we're filling up. Uh, yeah, it might be right. It'll take it all, but I can always do another run at some point, can't I? If I leave this tanker just sat down by that water, just down the hill there, look. Um, if I leave it just down there, I can always then just do the Tommy Smash and then come back and grab that later on. We're not going to be far off, are we? Yeah, it's just down a little bit, isn't it? So I'm going to take another thousand, two thousand litres and we'll be good as gold. Right, uh, so as I said, Tommy Smash in time. I'll do a whole load more of that. We'll get that sorted out. Uh, and then, yeah, Jeremy. Hopefully we'll be able to go down to the livestock market and Jeremy would have been delivered. Is that the best way of putting it? Yeah, probably. Hopefully Jeremy will have been delivered. We can get him in. Oh, that's what I can use those grass bales for. Of course I can. Well, we can feed Jeremy. I'll take those grass bales over um, to the sheep pen. And we'll, we, we can feed Jeremy with them. So they won't go to waste. That's perfect. Plus I can cut more grass at some point if we need to. So we haven't got to worry there. Awesome. This is such a lovely... Just... Isn't it amazing? Still for me, one of the prettiest maps. I, I just, you know, I know I've said it a lot and I say it all the time, and but it really is stunning. just gone lunchtime. I've just got back with the harvester from field one. Soybean is done. As you can see, tractor in the distance. We've got a worker now just going over and cultivating again with the Cambridge cultivator roller fertilizer thing that's making it all lovely for us. Um, the harvester, as you can see, is looking a little worse for wear. So I think what we'll do is we'll bring it into here and that will need a bit of work. Um, but that means 16,760 litres of soybean, the second harvest off a of field one, 
is also heading off to MC Terry, the Executive Vice President from Wolfside Organics. He wanted two complete um, harvests of organic soybean, and that's what we've done. So I'm going to take that off, um, and we've had a call. Jeremy is inbound to the train station. I'm going to whiz over to the store. I'm going to grab a, a little livestock trailer, just big enough for one sheep. I've taken the grass bales already over to the sheep pen. They've gone. Um, I'm trying to tidy the bales up over there, and it's not really going particularly well. <laughs> I've kind of consolidated the uh, silage bales, but yeah, not brilliant. But I'm doing, I'm doing the best. Um, oh, that was the thing I was going to do. You know what? I was thinking. Been a lot going on in this episode. An absolute load going on. I own field. We started with 12 and 13. I bought field 11. I'm thinking of buying field 10 and having the run right the way through here. These ones are quite expensive. These are owned by somebody else. That's what I said. They've got a contract for those. They're owned by somebody else. How much is field 16? Oh, that's combined. Yeah, field 10 is 85 grand. It's going to take us below the 100,000. But will it be worth it longer term? Because we've got a lot more space for putting more crop in the ground. So the more we can do in one go, the more money we can make in theory. Is that going to be risking a little bit? We've got everything we need for putting stuff in the ground. You know what, I'm going to buy it. Yep. We're now on field 10. Excellent. Jeremy's coming. We should. Oh, that's what I should have done. I've just suddenly realised on my merch website, I should have... Um, maybe I can do. I need somebody to do a... a draw, like a cartoon sort of drawing a sheep one I don't want to get done by copyright or anything of, of Jeremy we should have, we've, we've got farm dog merch we should have some Jeremy stuff maybe a t-shirt that says free Jeremy <laughs> see if we can get a trend on Twitter free Jeremy that'd be quite cool um, but Jeremy's on the way the time is now we have paid the ransom free Jeremy This is a little, um, if I remember, I'll put the details in the description. Lizard P8, 4x8, 4x8, I assume it's 4, 4x8. Anyway, I think it was an update to another trailer pack of some description. Oops, made a mess of that, didn't I? Still did. Lucky I've got a big old tractor in it. And what we should be able to do, I'm pretty sure this opens out. We've got him! Let's go! Before they change their mind. Thank you, Mark. Very much appreciated. It is just it is just in jest. Honestly. So off to the sheep pen. We have had such a busy time. Um, what have we done now? Is it four contracts in this episode? Four contracts complete. Or is it five? I've lost track. We've got cows up on the hill. Sheep? Well, a sheep. Let's <laughs> say sheep. I mean, yeah. We've got a sheep. Fantastic. Uh, the bells are there. I'll have to go back over to where... That big water fountain is up near the cows and grab the water bowser. We'll bring that back. Which way do I want to go? Down the hill, left the roundabout, up the hill, and we should be there. I think I'm getting more use to the map. Field numbers, no, not so much. But directions, yeah, not so bad. We are getting there. Excellent. In case you heard that, we don't have a court jester in the house. Farm dog has bells on the back door, so he can alert us if it needs to go out. Um, it doesn't often hit those, but um, for some reason, today... It's 
feeling very excitable. So, do we need to open the gate? I think the trigger's just here, isn't it? One whole sheep. Now, we do have a sheep contract, but that involves buying sheep, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Let's open that again. Please work. Yes. Oh, yes. The happiest of days. Where is he? Blimey. Speedy Gonzalez. Doesn't hang about, does he? Uh, right then. Let's get a bail in. Then I'll sort out the water. And with that, we have come to the end of another episode. Loads more contracts to do. Loads more work to do. I've got some ones that are contracts, but they, they actually are asking for help with things, not like products or crops or anything like that. I think one I've got is asking for help with transporting water, like um, excavators and stuff, because there's a burst pipe water leak somewhere, and oh, yeah, I've got all sorts of stuff. So hopefully, considering there's only one sheep there, we're not going to get, like I say, we're not going to get a huge amount at the moment. Let's put it there. At least he's fed, and I'll sort the water out in a little while. This needs to go back over to the main farm, because I've got more bale handling work to do. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Hope you're still enjoying the series. Hope you're still enjoying the lovely scenery. I certainly am. If you are, if you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.